Hi guys, in this video we'll be discussing the problem C, elemental de uh, decompress from code forces round 842, division 2. The problem states that you are given an array of array A of n integers, find two permutations P and Q of length n such that maximum of P, comma Q is equal to A of I. Uh, for all I is, less th I is greater than or equal to 1 and is less than or equal to n or report that P and Q do not exist. So then they have defined the like they have given the definition of permutation after that they have defined how they are giving the input so they will be providing us with the number of test cases and then they would be giving us the number uh, number n that is the number of elements in the permutation then they would, uh, would be providing us with the array a uh, the constraints are that array a would uh, the number of elements in the array a would be less than or equal to 2 into 10 to power 5 the number of test cases are also less than or equal to 10 to power 4 so if a solution doesn't exist we simply print no if a solution exists then we print a yes followed by the two arrays that is the array p and q so let's try to understand what the problem says and let's start with it so what the problem is saying is that uh, we'll be provided with the array a so the array a can have any values so let's try with the example so this is a valid example so let's try with it so the array is 5 3 4 2 5 so now for this array we have to tell them two permutations so permutation is basically 1 2 3 up to n so we can arrange them in any order so over here n is 5 so basically we can arrange 1 2 3 4 5 in any order and that would be called a permutation so we have to tell them two permutations p and q such that the maximum of at each element uh, the maximum at e each index is equivalent to this element so over here let's say p was 5 and uh, q was and this element p was 3 then p was 4 over here then p was 2 over here then it was 5 over here this it could be 1 then it could be 1 2 3 4 okay so this would be a valid answer let's say right so it's easy for us if if the number of elements are small let's say n is equal to 5 or something we can directly look at it and tell the answer but how do we develop an algorithm that can actually work up to n to n is of the order of this so basically we want a order of n log n solution at max order of n solution is perfectly perfectly fine or it's even better but even a n log n solution would work over here so how do we code it up so what we can see is that since we are checking the max so if we start traversing the array a then at any particular location i what i can say is that either p or q would should have the value a whatever value is in the a so let's say the value in the a is a i so i can say either p either p of i or q of i needs to be equal to a i if i am unable to assign p of i or q of i equal to a i then the solution does not exist so that is a basic like this that's a basic idea so in the starting itself when i wrote uh, wrote this particular answer i was using the same algorithm in my mind so what i'm doing is that okay so let's start again so that it's all, all it's clear to you as well so it's five three four two five five three four two five then we have to tell them p and q so and this is a so let's do it like this so at the starting i ask myself is there element can I assign 5 to P? Yes, definitely I can assign 5 to P. Can I assign 3 over here? Yes, I can. Can I assign 4 over here? Yes, I can. Can I assign 2 over here? Yes, I can. Can I assign 5 over here? No, I can't. Because I've already assigned 5, right? So I can't assign uh, assign like two numbers for the same permutation. In a permutation, all the numbers are unique, obviously. So what can I assign over here? I don't care. I'll look at it later. But where can I assign 5 then? Because 5 has to be assigned either to P or to Q, right? So great, I can assign 5 over here. That would be valid. Now what to do next? So over here, some of the elements are filled. So n of the elements are filled, but n elements are empty. In, to in total, we have two n elements, n over here and n over here. So n would be filled in a first iteration. After the first iteration, l elements are already filled, but n are still empty. So how do we fill them? So one point over here is that in the first iteration itself, let's say there was a 5 over here as well, right? Then we would have filled a 5 over here. In the in the iteration itself, and at next position would would we have been able to fill five over here? No, because uh, for p as well as for q, we would have already utilized five. 
then in that case we could have simply written no i hope that trivial observation is like not hard to understand so okay so how do we fill the rest remaining elements so what i can do is that for every element i want to greedily fill the element over there such that my answer doesn't changes so for example over here i have a 2 what if i fill it with a 3 or any other element so the answer to would change right that's not something i want because i want a valid answer so over here i can fill it with any element so i can fill here any element that is less than or equal to 2 right so i can fill it with 2 then come to this point what's the element i can fill it up with so i have to fill it with the element that's less than or equal to 5 but can i fill it up with 4 no i can't because 4 isn't available to me it's already filled can i fill it up with 3 no i can't it's already filled can i fill it up with 5 no definitely so what's the remaining element it's only one so i can fill it up with one how about this particular element uh, so this particular element what can i do over here so over here if you see that i've already filled up Uh, like i need a element that's less than or equal to 4 the choices i have is 1 2 3 4 these elements are less than or equal to 4 i greedily want to select select the maximum element i can fill over here so definitely 4 is the element i can fill right how about 3 i greedily want to select a element that's less than or equal to 3 and it's not been filled yet i can select 3 what about here so i greedily want to select a element that's less than or equal to 5 and has not been filled yet So what choices do I have? I just have a single choice, one. So I'll fill up with this with one. So I think the idea is pretty clear. Now let's try to understand the pseudo algorithm for this. So what I'll be doing is that I'll try. I'll firstly make two hash maps or maps or unordered sets. You can use whatever you want. We just want a lookup table so that we can look that what all values have already been filled, and we don't fill the same permutation with uh, like duplicate values. So let me call it. p map so p p map is the like the map or the hash map or the unordered set for okay just let's call it p set so it's the p set is the basically the set for the uh, pth permutation and the other is q set initially they are empty all so in my iteration what i'll do is that i'll start reversing int i is equal to 0 till that i'm i is less than n i plus plus and the element i'm uh, i'm at currently is a of i okay so let's call it l so element or l is a of i now i'll check if p set contains a l then if it doesn't contains l let's say if it doesn't contains l then i can say p set now contains l write it however you like the code actually matters at the end so and then we can say that p of i is equal to a of i what's next so then we can say else if so let's say p also p already contained l so we couldn't fill it up over there then we'll have to check that q set can does not contain l if it does not contain then we can say q set now contains l and q of i is equal to a of i if both of these conditions were invalid so that means uh, that a of i was already present in both pi and qi uh, p and q so in that case we'll have to return return no and just return out so that's simple now once we are out of this loop that would mean we have filled up So that this condition never executed, and we have filled all the n elements. So now we can say that I want to start traversing from int i equal to zero, i is less than n, i plus plus. Or let's just traverse for all the elements per se. So elements are from one to n. So let's call it from one to n. Now I'll check that if uh, p i is equal to my initial value. Let's say the initially I've gi I had given all the elements some values. Let's say it was minus one. So if it was minus one, then I have not filled p i right now. So I'll try to fill it with the lowest value, the greatest value possible. That would be the greatest value that is just less than q of i, right? I don't want to change my permutation as I had discussed right over here. So the value should be less than or equal to q of i, and I want to fill up with that. So what can I do for this? 
I need some sort of data structure for it for sure. So, what I can do is that I can maintain ok this got a bit messy apologies ok give me a second great. So, what I can say is that I want to maintain some sort of uh, let us say a set which contains all the available elements. So, this would be uh, let 1 be ok we already used the variable p set let us call it p p set I know it is not making any sense but let but let us just call it that so q q set. So, then the p p set would contain all the elements that were not already assigned to p i right. So, we can do a basic for loop for that. So, we can go from for i is equal to 1 till n and can check all the elements that have been assigned if a element has not been assigned we can put it in p set p p set and then for similarly for q q set as well. So, now p p set and q q set would actually contain the elements that have not uh, that are between 1 to n and have not been assigned to p i as well as for q i. I hope that makes sense. So, with that let us proceed further. So, now over here I will check that what is this what is the greatest element that is smaller than q i and is available in our p p set. For that I can use a upper bound operation a previous of upper bound. So, upper bound on my p p set for the element q of i. So, what a previous of upper bound would do is the upper bound would return me elements that is greater than q of i right. So, when I do a previous so it would return it would have returned me this smallest element that is greater than q of i just greater than q of i, but as soon as do i previous. So, it would give me the element that is either less than or equal to q of i and is the greatest element possible right. So, I hope that is easy to understand although the writing is not definitely, but cool. So, after that I will do else if I will do the same logic for q i as well. I think I do not need to go over that that is pretty self explanatory and if I am able to perform all of these operations. So, at the end I will be having my p i and q i and I will print that. However, over here if at any location. So, let us say I was not able to find any previous upper bound element over here of a q of i then also I will have to return no else at the end I will simply print yes and I will give my p vector and my q vector. So, that is how we do it. Now, let us look at the code code for the same. So, I had already submitted it. So, let me look at my code ok sorry. ok over here you can see that what I am doing is that initially I am just checking that if the current variable that is a i or uh, the, the current variable is actually v i my vet vector is v over here you can take vector whatever you want and I have taken a, a and b instead of p and q that is the standard way I take vectors. So, I will check if I if I do not already have an element v i then I will insert it. So, I will make it known that I have already traversed uh, I have already used v i for my a and I will put that particular element that is location I am going to do the same for b. If I am unable to do any uh, any of these two operations like I am not able to insert it in a or in b then I will return no. After that I have used rem a and rem b. So, rem a and rem b are basically whatever elements are remaining in a and b. So, there is a bit of nomenclature change in the solution I explained I talked about p p q set uh, p p set and q q set. So, they are basically rem a and rem b. In my rem a and rem b I also I am putting in the numbers that have already not be uh, that have already not been added on onto my a s and b s that is my a that is my a vector or an or my b vector. After that I am traversing from all for all the elements and I am checking if my a i is equal to 0 right that means. So, my initial values over here was 0 right. So, if it still contains my initial values that means it ha has not been initialized in that case I will be going for that entire logic of upper bound as I told you earlier. So, it would basically tell me the greatest element that is less than or equal to b right. So, over here what I am doing is that in case the upper bound itself points to the begin. So, that means that I do not have any element that is less than or equal to b i present in the rem, uh, rem set. In that case I will have to print no otherwise I will decrement my i t. So, this is equivalent to like shifting your pointers to the previous variable. So, uh, previous iterator 
so that you get a value less than or equal to bi, bi. and once I am able to do that I will assign ai with that and I will re remove this element from reme so that it is not used multiple number of times I will be doing the exactly same thing with bi at the end I know if I was able to complete this entire, entire loop so that means all my uh, all my elements would have been populated I will simply say yes and I will return my array a and my array b so one thing I will I can share with you guys that I can simply return my array in this form so I can simply use the cout statement followed by the uh, array name uh, and I don't need to use any loops that's because I use some uh, like predefined code so I use these co codes over here so what they do is that they basically you can say they, they basically overload the functions so now whenever I provide uh, a vector to the cout it knows what exactly to do with it so it basically iterates over all the elements and then prints that if you know uh, if you guys want uh, th this code let me know I'll just share it in the comment section if anyone if, or any one of you wants it with that I think uh, there was this solution was a bit big but you enjoyed the solution and you got the concept as well if you still have any doubts let me know in the comment section below thanks a lot guys